Most make predictions and then never admit they're wrong. Yeah, that's not Mackie and Judd. This is the place where we just totally own our horrible predictions. Write this down. And eat them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Write that down. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. Welcome in Purple Daily, Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. And every Wednesday, we go through our full selection of predictions, and we hold each other accountable with statistics. The only show in America that actually keeps track of our predictions week in and week out. So uh, don't be fooled by imitators. And for the YouTube audience, I'm sorry, I will pop this up on the screen here. I was uh, late to the punch here. The show is presented by our friends over at TCL. One of the word, uh, one of the easy for me to say, one of the world's best-selling consumer electronics brands. They have a new lineup of award-winning TVs, delivering the most entertainment with stunning resolution at an affordable cost. Enjoy more of the things you love with TCL and Judd. Uh, a shout out to our friends also at Park Tavern, the official sports bar of the sports dad himself, as he sits there contemplating his write that down predictions. That's right. So here's the thing about it too. Park Tav, it, it's a place where where Sports Dad loves it because there are so many possibilities. You can go sit at the first bar, watch games, and and sip on, preferably, for, for me, of course, a Surly. There's a back bar, too, that we've gone to and watch games, Phil and Dex. There's bowling. There are so many possibilities. And one of those possibilities is having a party at Park Tavern. And I don't mean a small one. I mean a big one. I mean... A, a blowout party, 40, 50 people that you plan. And now you're saying, but sports dad, I don't want to plan. And that's where this gets so simple because guess what? It only takes you going to parktavern.net to basically tell them what you want and they will do all the planning for you. That's right. You will look like you've got it all together and behind the scenes, you'll take credit. They'll do all the, the uh, work. 952-929-6810, 952-929-6810, parktavern.net, uh, Park Tavern, St. Louis Park, my neck of the woods. It is a great place to bowl, to party, or just to watch games. Again, that website, parktavern.net. All right, dudes, let's get into how this works here. We have two weeks left in the Write That Down season, the 2022 Write That Down season. We run into the Super Bowl. We've had a lot of drama atop the completion percentage standings and also the touchdown standings. So a lot to be decided in the next couple of weeks. It's three Vikings or football-related predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. We keep track of completion percentage and touchdowns. And listeners, if you want to participate, like our guy Andre is about to, you can send us a message through the Score North app. We'll get you scheduled for sometime early in 2023. Are you ready to be held accountable? Let's do it. All right, let's start with Judd. Right, let's go, let's go, let's go. I got, I got oh, man. Oh, it's, kind of, it's been a bad I, week for most of us here. So, yeah. Judd, you said Joe Burrow would be the Super Bowl MVP. The Niners would represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Sean Payton would coach the Cowboys. That's an old one, but yep. It's like a year ago, yeah. Yep. And KOC would, relieve, would receive at least two oh, man. votes for NFL Coach of the Year. Damn it. Snubbed. I said the Bengals would win their first Super Bowl. At some point, I said KOC Coach of the Year, JJ OPOY. You'll be right in the second one. And Zadarius will be the NFL yeah. Comeback Player of the Year. That looked like it was going to hit for a while, but yep. dude, mm. dude disappeared for the last eight games. Mm. Listeners. Oh, woof. my God. Lacey play. said the winner of this year's Super Bowl will be a team that has never won a Super Bowl before. Well, the Eagles have won one. The Chiefs have won one. KOC Coach of the Year from Mark. Trey said Brian Asamo will be the NFC Rookie of the Year. Thanks a lot Curtis that, said Cousins will win the MVP this year. Good Lord. Woof. Bloodbath Woof. here. Oh, Bloodbath. my. We got no green? No green this week. Nobody oh. had a correct prediction this week. Declan, you said Jalen Hurts would account for the best passer rating or QBR among the four starting quarterbacks on championship weekend. You said the Bengals would not be trailing at any point in the fourth quarter against the Chiefs. And that ends the most disappointing buzzkill wow. week, I think, of the season so far. I don't think we've ever before in the history of this, sh of this show had this 
where well, we've had the whole during, thing. Well, sometimes during the off season when there's not as much coming off the board. Sure, okay. There's times, but, but yeah. When oh everyone God. has, like, red, it's, I don't, yeah, it's pretty unprecedented. So, with that, Judd oh and Declan God. are tied exactly for the completion percentage lead at 35.7. I'm only 2% back at 33.5. Listeners dragging way behind at 20.1%. Oh Old Macadac leads the uh, touchdown battle with 19 to Declan's 15 to Judd and the listeners, 11. And so just to be clear, this goes until after the Super Bowl, correct, Phil? And then we the, yeah, done. So our final predictions, the final accountability session will take place the Wednesday after the Super Bowl. So your, your final predictions will come in before the Super Bowl, and then we'll do the final comeuppance the Wednesday after the Super Bowl. Make sense? Okay. Yes. So mm-hmm. get ready. Get your strategy rest. You be, you have this week and next week to make predictions. Right. You, you have six predictions left. Right. right. What's right. your strategy? You can you can punt predictions into the future. And make Declan. You won't be surprised by who's what I'm gonna, gonna do. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is not gonna surprise any of you out there in the audience. Okay. Oh my god. All right. Let's get Andre in here. He is our guest listener predictor on uh, Purple Daily. Write that down today. Andre, what is happening, dude? How you doing? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful morning. It's 70 degrees outside. No complaints. Wait. Awesome, man. Where are you at? I'm in Where's... Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, we're jealous. That we're jealous. I'm in, I'm in Seattle where it's like 45, although I am moving to Minneapolis in less than two weeks where it's 50 degrees very below cold. zero, apparently. So yeah, there cold. is a little winter storm. It was like in the high 60s a couple of days ago. Oh, <laughs> oh <laughs> man. Oh, my God. Judd's leaving. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> so you've uh, you, you made an appearance last year on Write That Down. What did you learn from your first appearance that you can carry over here uh, into this one? Don't get overzealous with the touchdowns because I think <laughs> among all the listeners this year, it's been it's been our demise. Yeah, it is tough. Yeah, listeners like to come on and kind of shoot their shot a little bit. You know, it's boring to throw checkdowns when it might be your only appearance of the year. So I would I encourage think- you. You know, don't. Don't be too conservative here. Don't, don't throw, throw the ball down yards. the field. Yeah, don't uh, don't turtle into the fetal position here. Just keep some aggressiveness. Deal. So let's let's start with Andre. Make your first prediction. We'll go around the room three times. All right. My first prediction is the Vikings. By week one of next year, they will have at least nine new starters combined on offense and defense. Wow. Well, defense, you're. Yeah, I mean. Both linebackers, probably potentially both corners, at least one corner. Safety, probably maybe. a center, a number two wide receiver, yeah, potentially that's probably very on safe. offense. That's, that's I, good. I still think that that is a like, touchdown prediction. Mm-hmm. Though. Yes. Yes. It's like you're literally Great. talking about turning over 40% of a 13 win uh, collection of starters. So write this down. That's right, a good Joe. one. Mm-hmm. Ijiro Avero. Ivero? Uh, Ijiro Avero. Yep. Rivero, okay. He yep. will he will interview for the Vikings DC position this month. So I don't think the Colts are going to uh, hi- hire him. That's going to put him out of a head coaching job. I don't see him going to Denver with Peyton. So I, I don't see him sticking with the Broncos. And I think that the Vikings have slowed the process in part because they do want to talk to him. And, and I think he might become a leading candidate for the job once that takes place. So just write this part down, though, Dex. He will interview for the D.C. position this month. Okay. Got it. Write this down. Okay. Make a similar prediction, but with a different name. Brian Flores will be the Vikings defensive coordinator. He will get the job. Okay. They were pretty chummy. Quasi and Flores were pretty, pretty chummy in Mobile this week. Looked like they were maybe talking about uh, defensive domination in purple. I heard I, they, that they were talking about shell defenses, Phil. Just, just laughing. Always playing shell, just always, <laughs> no, just, all, hey, Brian, if you come here, you got to play the shell, right? And he's like, oh, absolutely. We need even more prevent. More Write it prevent. Down. You like writing things down. All right. I disagree with Declan, and I'm going to one up Judd here. Ejiro Evero will be the next defensive coordinator of the Minnesota Vikings. And if you're wondering, where is this coming from? We did a bonus episode today and kind of laid out why they might, why this thing has kind of stalled and why is Averro the the current, but also former, I guess, because Sean Payton just got hired 
defensive coordinator of the Broncos could be uh, an option. He spent time with Quasey in San Francisco, with KOC in Los Angeles, and uh, and he's going to be open for, if he doesn't get a head coaching job, which he's up for, he'll be open for a defensive coordinator. So. Write it down. You like writing things All right, back down. to Andre. For the Vikings' first pick of the 2023 NFL draft, they were either select a wide receiver or defensive end with their first pick. Okay. Yeah. I think those are two. Uh, get, get younger at edge. Get more explosive at wide receiver. Let's see that. Write it down. You like writing things down. Which one do you want them to take? Wide receiver. Yeah. Like Jordan Addison or somebody falls. I could see that happen. Somebody Zay from Flowers. TCU, maybe. Quentin Johnston. Yeah. Make that happen. Any of those guys. All right, Judd, what's your second? Much to my dismay. Write this down. The Vikings will trade out of their first round draft position, which is 24. I mean, the, the Dolphins thing confuses things, but they are officially the 24th pick in the first round. The Vikings will trade out of that position. I'm not going to say go back or up. I think it's off the record that they'll go back, but when the draft comes, they will not be picking in the 24th position. Interesting. In Write it down. You like writing things down. All right, Dex. All right, uh, I'll make a couple Pro Bowl skills comp predictions. <laughs> yes. So I, Who's tearing I was their really ACL in the yep. yeah Robert oh Edwards God. playing in a beach football oh, game. That's right. I was really hoping to see the roster for the longest drive, and they have not released it as of our recording time. So I'm going to write this down that this player will win it. So. Derek Carr is a big-time golfer. In fact, I think when he signed his contract extension, his exact words at his press conference was, if I wasn't playing football, I'd be a pro golfer. So write it down. Derek Carr will have the longest drive in the Pro Bowl skills competition. I, he, this might come off the board very soon, and I think they're, they're, this will be shown tomorrow. So I don't know who's on the teams or if he even will participate, but I think he's a likely candidate to do it. I don't know why he wouldn't want to do it. So Derek Carr will have the longest drive at the Pro Bowls skills competition. Did you see the Raiders' social media accounts, their Twitter account, sent out like, congratulations to Derek Carr yeah. for making the Pro Bowl? Oh, no. How about Super this thing? Why are, why are we naming <laughs> replacements? The guy from Baltimore just and got Tyler named Huntley. to it. Tyler Huntley. He threw like two touchdowns. Why are how we did, doing this? How, why is he a Pro Bowler? He only played half the season because they couldn't find. They literally have gone through the rest of that that list and landed on him. Yep. But why so, are we but, doing but, this? But we're not so, playing the game. So do you have to? So, so they go through a list and ask, "Hey, do you want to go and like uh, participate in some dumb skills competitions?" If someone says no, I then guess. they then they aren't a pro bowler. I have no idea how they're doing this, but I thought this was. I thought part of this was okay. The guys that get named are in a fun, you know, environment skills competition. But I didn't realize we were actually going to replace guys left and right. I thought we were done with that. What is I want? What's the list of skills competitions? I mean, there's a bunch of them. There's which one is most passing. likely to, to give Judd anxiety about a Vikings player tearing his meniscus? There's some type of uh, touch Dodge football ball. game. Dodgeball. And, and a, there's a touch football game, right? That the Mannings are yeah. coaching. That yeah, makes that me seems real nervous. That seems dangerous. I don't want anyone yeah. cutting. I don't want anyone doing anything. Let's just name the damn teams and be done with it. That was my whole goal. Don't yeah, the, the, the dodgeball is for sure going to result in a torn Achilles tendon for somebody. It's going to be unfortunate. <laughs> a ruptured bicep or something. That'd be hilarious. Well, yeah. uh, okay, or write this down. Write this down. My <laughs> second prediction. At some point, I'm going to say at some point in the month of, I'll say sometime before March 15th, just to give myself a little wiggle room here. So between now and March 15th. There will be a credible report that the Vikings and Kirk Cousins have engaged in contract extension discussions. I don't know if they will officially. Maybe they'll hit uh, an impasse and they have to explore other options. But there will be in the next yes. six weeks, so between now and March 15th, yes. a credible report that the Vikings and Kirk Cousins have engaged in contract extension discussions. Write this down. That's Write a slam dunk, right? I don't know. I guess that part we'll... has to happen. <laughs> We'll see. I, I'm not saying it's a touchdown pass prediction, but yeah, no. I would, uh, I would like to, I would like to think that they will talk at some point in the next six weeks. All right, Andre, what's your third and final prediction? Third and final prediction, and I don't think it's happened yet. Justin Jefferson will catch his first touchdown on Sunday Night Football this upcoming season. Okay. 
Wait, doesn't get a chance to play on Sunday Night Football, and I don't think he's caught one yet on Sunday Night Football. Interesting. So he's never had a Sunday night. Well, how many Sunday night games have they even played in the in the whatever it is three years that he's been here? I lose okay. track now with uh-huh. Thursday games and Sunday games and Monday games. Okay, so but he'll catch a touchdown pass on Sunday night football is your prediction here? Okay. Yes. I like it. So we have to get a Sunday night game. That's a parlay. We have to get a Sunday night game, and then Justin Jefferson has to catch a touchdown. In. Who throws it? <laughs> Off the record. Trey Lance. Oh, there you man. go. He's scrambling another, around. He's looking. An- another hey. Kirk hater, Andre, yep. coming in here. All right, since you have this life-changing platform, you hater, is there anyone <laughs> you'd like to thank that brought you to this pinnacle moment again? Uh, you guys, Declan, for emailing me back. Um, I use Athletic Greens, so Athletic Greens. Um, and you guys just bring in the purple content every single day. I appreciate it. Awesome, man. Andre, great work. Good luck with your predictions. Thank you. Appreciate you coming on, man. And uh, screw you for the 70 yeah. degree weather that you're enjoy Hawaii. You're <laughs> I'm sure you are. <laughs> Thank you. We all, make, we all make choices. All right. Speaking of athletic greens, by the way, AG1. So it's kind of cool that Andre and there's I've, I've heard from some other Purple Daily listeners, too, that have either uh, recently discovered athletic greens, AG1 or have been on the ride for a long time. Um, this is a great boost to your day and to your nutrition and quality of life. Seventy five. High quality ingredients that give you the most important daily nutrients with one scoop mixed into your water. First thing in the morning. I like the first thing in the morning. I also sometimes you get that brain fog halfway through the day. So you could mix it in maybe around two o'clock, three o'clock. For me, brain fog lifted, energy levels heightened. It helps with my personal gut health and uh, supports my immune system as well and dials me in to unleash football takes on you guys. Um, Check it out. If if a, if a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, if you just don't get the nutrients from food or if you have multivitamins and probiotics, all these things, let Athletic Greens AG1 take the place. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. AthleticGreens.com slash Purple Daily. AthleticGreens.com slash Purple Daily. And you can help us out. Uh, this is actually like a really cool partnership for us. Uh, they they generally work with um, some of the, the larger podcasts in the country, and here's little old us coming in. And so you can help us by going to athleticgreens.com slash purple daily and in turn reap the benefits of this amazing product. Also a shout-out to our friends over at Nutrisource Judd, the official dog food of Mackie and Judd and Purple Daily. Uh, old Maya Mackie is uh, is she's kind of coaxed us now into like instead of just two meals a day, we do like a full meal in the morning. Yeah, and we kind of split her meals. She likes to she likes to get into it three times. You're getting pushed around. That's that's the bottom line, and it's great. I admire it. I get pushed around. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. No, as I know. Long as the, happy wife, happy dog, happy yep. life. Right. Yep. Exactly right. And and I know what you're saying right now. Sports dad, how do you get pushed around? Well, it's worse. It gets worse because if you are what watching this right now, that is Stella. She is 12. Yes, she's that small. And yes, she gets what she wants at almost any point. And guess what she wants, ladies and gentlemen? It's Nutrisource. It is a breakfast dinner. And as you saw right there on the chair with her, the training rewards treats. It is basically nine below zero with a wind chill. And guess who still wants to go outside? Because she knows when she comes back in, she's going to warm up with a treat. Nutrisource, as Phil just said, happy dog, happy life. And the best part, healthy dog, too. Yeah. Nutrisource helps with that. All right, let's get to uh, the final predictions here. And then Tom Brady retired this morning, and there's some tentacles there that we can we can follow up on. But, Write this down. Joe, what's your third and final prediction? Okay, uh, in again, continuing to push my predictions out next week, I will uh, I will actually have to make some that are going to be timely, assuming that Declan does take the lead. Write this down. Antoine Winfield will be inducted into the Vikings Ring of Honor next season. He's not in. I checked it. Antoine Winfield mm-hmm. will be the next guy. So next year in training camp, when they're like, they, they're like, Twan, can you come here to help out with our nickel corners who are awful? They're going to surprise him, and he will be inducted into the Ring of Honor, which he, by the way, richly deserves next season. Yeah, he's one of the most underrated players in Vikings history. 
Just because he rock. wasn't super flashy. He didn't lead the league in interceptions. He was just rock solid, elite tackler, would blow plays up, kind of like a Harrison Smith type football IQ. You know? Question for you. Best free agent signing in Vikings history from another team. So so like not like Favre, like Favre retired, and but I'm just talking about when things are normal, okay? You know, in March, you cut a deal. It's it's not this Favre circus. Is Hutch, Antoine it's either Hutch Winfield, or Tuan, right? Hutch, Tuan. I mean, the Crusaders are going to say Kirk. Kirk, I mean, Kirk's in the in the five, maybe, I guess, because he's put up numbers and stuff. Hutch is, but... yeah, Hutch is definitely up there. Ryan Longwell, you know. Longwell? It was a good one. It was a good one, but yes. Tuan... Longwell could have been solidified even more if you had allowed him to actually kick a field goal at the end of That'd that 2009 nice. championship. Yeah, if Brett had actually nice. just stumbled forwards for five to six yards yeah. on his bad leg, but not he couldn't run. Still, he was too too hurt. Of course, not Pat that we're still bitter 13 years later. Of Pat Mahomes. Um, actually, did did you guys see the tweet a couple of days ago? Lieber put out a tweet about the about the um, OT call against the, the pass uh, interference Bengals guy. No, I think it was oh the, the late hit. And his tweet said hashtag still not over it. And so I tweeted back, yeah. And if Brett had just stumbled forward, you guys probably could ha- have won. Ben hasn't responded to my response yet. Hmm. I don't think. I don't think. Well, I've talked to Ben. I'm. I have heard that uh, certain members of a certain media company aren't allowed to interact with certain members mean? of another. He, he's he's in our building every day. Bu- I talk to him on Mondays when I'm leaving. I pass him. I'm yucking off. Do you guys talk in the building? Okay, I'm giving let's him get him nod. on the show sometime. I'm talking him about, I've talked to him about uh, um, certain games. Yeah, let's I'm, get him on the show sometime. He is uh, he is also in the Hubbard umbrella, which is where Score North lies, too. That let's PI call, though, that, that he's still upset about, he should be. Yeah. It was bad. It was a phantom I, PI call. He Absolutely. faced... He faced guarded the guy but if you look at the rule book there's no rule why are we still talking still talking about, about, this. about this yes yeah yeah <laughs> because it came up and it's still something that i i was 13 years ago thinking about you know what it was also the last best chance to make a super bowl because 17 wasn't it <laughs> write this down this is purple you daily like, you need to rant about 13 antoine. years ago i love it oh <laughs> i love nine. antoine i don't get i love Antoine. Tuan was a great player. He was. Like I agree with that. Yep. All right, Dex, what's your next prediction? All right. Um, write this down. Justin Jefferson will win an event at the Pro Bowl games, either individually <laughs> or part of one of the team based events. He will okay. win an event at the Pro Bowl games this weekend. Okay. Yeah, I could I just would rather him not participate in any of these. Even the golf like if, if I don't know if he golfs or not, but I don't need him tearing a how about how about this one? The gridiron gauntlet. Have you heard about this? Judd's going to absolutely freak out over this. <laughs> it's a four-part gauntlet. Each segment, 40 yards in length, includes a series of breakaway walls, a section of climb over walls and under tables, a tire run, and a blocking sled carrying a Legends coach across the finish line. Wow. That's uh Why? Why are we doing this? You got rid of the game, name the teams, and move on. These guys can all take their own vacation, okay? It's Vegas. They can go to Vegas. Vegas is cheap. Honest to God, what are we doing? Wouldn't they all rather be doing something else in Vegas, too? Like, they're okay, I guess we'll go over here and play in these games. If somebody gets hurt, honest to God, I I just, I I can't. Judd's just fired up today, man. Yeah, he is. Uh, It's hilarious. All right, um, I'm going to try and make a Super Bowl prediction. Write this down. Let's go... uh, Boy, I'd, I'd really like a completion. I've been I've been hunting for touchdowns so much the last few months, but I kind of want both titles. So write this down. Patrick Mahomes will throw a touchdown pass in the first half of the Super Bowl. That's right. Patrick Mahomes will throw a touchdown pass in the first half of the Super Bowl. You guys have checked down time after time after time. Okay, that even takes me to another okay, level so right there. Up. All right. That okay. takes me. Old Macadac needs a couple percentage points. He's being fully transparent. He just needs a completion in the Super Bowl. He only had four predictions wait left, till, and this was one You of wait them. till next week. You wait till I go Super Bowl <laughs> predictions. Now. You want to see checkdowns? I'm going to give you three of the greatest checkdowns of all time. 
Oh, okay. Write this down. Sounds good. All right, those are the write that down predictions and the accountability session here. One more week of predictions in the 2022 season. We'll see where where this all goes. Um, all right, everyone kind of heard this news this morning that Tom Brady has retired. The video he put out was very self-aware. He goes, I'm just going to get right to the point. There's not going to be no drama. I'm retiring. I'm not going to do a big emotional thing like I did last time because I already did it. So um, two days ago on this show, we explored for almost an hour the possibility of the 49ers being sick of their current quarterback situation, and we floated the idea of for the third straight year, by the way, of calling the 49ers, asking Kirk Cousins to waive his no-trade clause. Did this morning's announcement by Tom Brady, who probably would have been the Niners' number one guy, all right, screw this Brock Purdy elbow injury, Trey Lance we don't trust, plus he's coming back from a bad injury, Jimmy Garoppolo's a free agent. Tom Brady would have made the most sense as a one-year mercenary to get the Niners over the top, right? Does this news make our conversation less of a reckless speculation theory and more of an actual thing that may be talked about between the Niners and the Vikings. If I was buying what Brady is selling right this moment, absolutely. Yes. But I'm not yet. And here's why Oh, you think he's not retiring. I think he's on the fence and what he did today now does the Farvinian thing of everyone's going to leave Tom alone. He's from the Bay area. And if I'm not mistaken, his parents are still there. Okay. This gives San Francisco time to get its um, get its ducks in a row. Uh, because there is a chance, guess what? Trey Lance looks great. Who knows? Like, we don't know. There's variables here. I think Purdy, because of the, the six-month UCL absence now, is out as far as contention for the opening day starter. Trey Lance is not. I think Trey Lance is going to be, uh, if what I saw reported yesterday is accurate, he's going to be set to go for off-season camps. This is going to give the 49ers some time. Tom Brady, in my opinion, is not going to allow himself to get fat. He is now, he's he's a he's a cyborg of sorts. So I think what this does is I think that this allows everyone else is going to leave Tom now be. Tom's not going hmm. to get calls from most teams. Tom, I, I mean, keep in mind, and I know this sounds weird because the majority of folks are going to say, okay, he did this last year. He's not going to do it again. But these guys are weird. And San Francisco is his team. And if Trey Lance isn't working out, and Kyle's like, oh, crap, what are we going to do? Tom Brady's going to be right there. So I don't think he's out yet. But as far as the potential, I do think that there's a very good chance that at least privately, San Francisco is going to call the Vikings and say, what are your intentions? Now, the Vikings might say, we're going to sign Kirk to another year extension. And so he's going to have two years left and then it's done. Or the Vikings might say, hold on a second here. Kevin keeps talking about this one play that occurred in the playoff game. Not sure if you recall it, but it was no, just one eight. play though. It's, it's just, just one play. One play. It's just, but Kevin keeps like, like in his sleep. He's like, check down, check down. What are you doing? It's like, Kevin, honey, wake up. And he's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm dreaming <laughs> about that play. Again. Check, how can he check it down? How can he check it down? How can he check it down? But, but I, but I don't know that it, it was changed. a chip and choice route. It was yeah, a chip exactly, and choice route. Exactly right. <laughs> I shouldn't have had Hawk chip. Why do I have Hawk chip? Kevin, wake up. You're having a nightmare again. <laughs> so anyway, I, I, I don't think that this is done playing out. And I don't think that the Brady thing is necessarily done. Uh, and But I do think that the 49ers are at some point in time because it's just it's their duty to inquire. Yeah, so that, I, that's I think this is a lot to go still. This is so I, I do think he's retired. I just don't I don't. There's there was no reason for him to other than just like matching the same date a year ago, February 1st, that he announced his initial retirement, which is weird. He's just to the day. Apparently, February 1st is when his internal body clock decides that it's no longer time to play. It's, yeah. um, I think he was very much on the fence. If he was on the fence again, he could have easily waited another few weeks. He could have had some some conversations with he's a free agent, you know, like he could have right. had. Wh why not have a month's worth of conversations unless you are really really done. Another aspect to this is, so there was a report that, so his wife, well, wife, ex-wife, Giselle lives in Miami, right? And they had, there was a report that he was like, they were looking at private schools for his kids in Southern Florida, Miami area. And that's part of the reason why Tampa was great. Cause he could just like, just a couple hours away, just pop down private jet or whatever, however you want to go back and forth. 
San Francisco is about as far as you can travel from where his kids and potentially, you know, where he wants to root himself. So that are there life reasons here that would prevent him from pursuing that as a 46 year old, soon to be 46 year old man. I think he's done. So I, I, I wouldn't rule anything out. I'm not going to spit on what you just said, but if he's done, what does San Francisco do here? Brock Purdy, there was another report this morning from like some doctor in the know about like UCL injuries that this whole six month pro like major league baseball pitchers need 12 months to recover. Now they're throwing sliders and they have to throw a hundred pitches at full velocity. Quarterbacks aren't putting that much torque on their elbow compared to pitchers, but like, okay, he's a seventh round pick that you tricked up in a system. He's not just the next Tom Brady. He's right. a guy that stepped in and played well in your system, and now he's going to miss the entire offseason of workouts. Maybe be back for training camp. And you're ready to win now. You just traded a bunch of draft capital for Christian McCaffrey. You got George Kittle, who's not getting any younger, and Debo Samuel. So to me, Brock Purdy is a backup for you next. Like going at your your plan can't be hope to God Brock Purdy comes back, right? So, and Jimmy Garoppolo, do you think he's going to want to come back to San Francisco after everything they put him through? I read it's done there. He's not going back. He's done a great job just, like, keeping the peace, but they've, you know, they've made it clear that he's not someone that they want to build around. They only call him for a, you know, oh, I'm desperate at 2 o'clock in the morning. Are you up? Like, that's what they do with Jimmy. So their only current internal option is Trey Lance, who is also coming off a major injury. They weren't even really sure about him going into last year, right? Like, they had Jimmy Garoppolo on speed dial on the practice field. Like, okay, in case this guy sucks, can you just be ready to play for us? Okay, thanks. They're going to look for a veteran quarterback. Whether it's a trade for Derek Carr or some other option that, you know, Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Rodgers is going to command a couple first-round picks almost certainly. They don't have that type of draft capital. So I'm just saying, like, people kind of laugh, like, you guys are just speculating. This conversation might be one of the only ones that San Francisco can turn to if they're looking for a clear, reliable quarterback that doesn't get hurt every five minutes. So I think where the the Brady potential Brady plan makes sense is this. I think that they will probably um, try and get a look at Lance. And if they feel that that he can go and be productive – that's an option. Uh, but I agree with your point, which is they are set to roll now. So who, whoever starts for them on opening day needs to be a guy that can win games, mm-hmm. not a project of any sort. And that's where they might com- come to a conclusion. Hey, you know what? Trey's not there. We thought he, w- he would be a year ago. He got hurt. He missed valuable time. But yes, I think this story is a long way from done. And I guess part of the Kirk thing too is if the Vikings go go to Kirk and – talk extension that he doesn't like or they just say hey you know what kirk it's been great you might come back in 2024 but we are going to allow you to play this contract out and the cousins camp is like whoa that's not how we do things that's not how how chains does things uh then there's a chance that they'll have to call san fran and it's not going to be very hard for quasi to pick up the phone he worked for john lynch so, like, no, this is no. a very easy conversation. It's not like prying. I, I mean, we, we know two things. Quasi uh, has, we think, at least we know this, good relationships with people in San Fran. And we know that Kyle Shanahan is a Kirk fan. And the important variable that we discussed a couple of days ago is this. Kirk Cousins stays healthy. Yes. He stays healthy. And I guess Kittle, at, at the end of the season, a clean out when – when San Fran players were talking to reporters was like, went through his whole list of QBs. And he's like, I just want continuity. I just want the same guy, you know? And, and I mean, that's important. That's important because Purdy's a great story, but now he's hurt. And Trey Lance, you don't, don't know. And Garoppolo actually gave you stability, but he got hurt too. And so, yeah. you know, Kirk Cousins, he brings, he brings, no matter what we say about him, as a starting point, the most important thing. The man doesn't get hurt. Correct. I think for the Vikings, because this all starts with a, a Vikings cousins conversation. And I know if people, like, you guys are just trying to get rid of cousins. We're looking at the three to five year window for this team. He's going to be 35 years old. Whether you love or hate the five year body of work and, and what it has or hasn't done for the Vikings. 
you can't just look at Tom Brady and say, well, he played till he was 46 years old. Most quarterbacks start to erode, especially the ones that aren't as physically gifted, you know, 35, 36 years old. So this is something that you have to look out for. He's going to want an extension. He wants to be here. He said him and his family, they'd like to retire as Vikings, but they would like to do it also making market value, which has been his his thing, and that's his that's his right. So it's all going to start with a contract extension discussion in the next month, month and a half, presumably with the Vikings. If I'm the Vikings, I say, all right, dude, you know and we know this defense needs a full reboot. Adam Thielen, he's kind of cooked. We've got some cap problems here. So we know that we can kind of tap you for these extensions and void years and like we have in the past. We need to do it even more aggressively this time. So we would be okay with having you back for two or three total years, 2023, 24, maybe 25. But it's got to be, I know we talk on this show about like the 13 and a half, you can't pay a player 13 and a half percent of your salary cap historically and win a Super Bowl. That, that magic line for 2023 is, is $30 million. And it's not some like Patrick Mahomes could win a Super Bowl and, and set the new bar in two weeks. So it's not an, you know, it's, there's some wiggle room. But I would say you've made so much money, and we're going to continue paying you a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Let's get that thing. Dude, sign for 20 to $25 million if you really want to win a Super Bowl. That's the number that we need to go get defensive players in free agency that are 26 years old, coming off their rookie scale contract to get a replacement for Adam Thielen. You know, do us a favor here. It can't be this, like, $35, $40 million albatross that he continues to try and fight for. If he box at that, it opens the entire door at that point. Say, all right, well, we're trying to make this work, but we can't, based on where we're at with our cap and based on all these bloated contracts on defense, we need more wiggle room or it doesn't make sense to pay you anyways because we're not going to win. We can't fill the other roster spots. If he box at that, then I think you quietly say you and your representation can talk to teams. And we'll see. And and then if you come back and say the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will give you four years, I'd say, okay, that's great. Now let's talk potential compensation. Yeah. So yeah, the the thing that I the thing that we don't know from both the Viking standpoint and the cousin standpoint is this. If he's going to play out the contract, is that going to be something that that both sides are willing to allow? Well, or think- or will he say, No, I want I got three more years left. I want a, a contract that is ironclad again. And now the most important thing is this. Justin Jefferson, starting in 2025, is going to be the highest paid player on this team. Mm-hmm. Can't be Kirk. So that runs into uh, what do we do there? And does it make sense to like extend him through 25, but then cut him before 25? And again, you're into all of those implications that you don't want to deal with. Another thing, too, here is he, he could almost certainly – if he has another decent year, I don't think he's going to be like one of the three or four highest paid quarterbacks if he hits free agency in a year from now because just because of his age and stuff. But let's say he has another decent year, throws for 4,000 yards, you know, 30 touchdowns, has another good season, Justin Jefferson, whatever, and, and they ride the last year of his contract out. He's going to get a, a fairly big contract. I think he's going to – I disagree with uh, – was it Dustin, our Mackie, and Judd write that down predictor that says his next one's going to be like a 20 or $25 million. I still think a team, a quarterback desperate team, would give him a chunk of money. The Vikings, for instance, were in a better, I guess what I'm saying is he would make more money going somewhere else, hitting the free agent market, than what the Vikings could really like afford to pay him based on the rest of their roster holes. When they signed him initially five years ago, they could afford to pay him a crazy amount of money because they had all these other guys locked and loaded on like rookie scale contracts, defensive players that were in their prime. Eric Kendrick's rookie scale contract, Daniil Hunter rookie scale contract. I think Xavier Rhodes was maybe still on a, maybe not, maybe he was on his, uh, his extension, but like they had a ready made top five defense and some room to play with, with the cap. So like, all right, here's the final piece. Let's plop him down. That's no longer the case. They, they have because of poor drafting and a couple whiffs and free agency here and there and guys aging out. They can't, they're not in the same position to pay top dollar for a non elite quarterback. And, and he, and he probably knows that too. Would he play ball and say, I want to be here and I want to, like, I want to help make this work? To this point in his career, he has never, ever done that. 
Mm -hmm. So here's the other variable that we don't know that actually, though, and this is what concerns me about the, the future path of the Vikings franchise, and it's this, ownership, okay? So if they are bound and determined that they are going to continue to just be competitive, we want to be competitive. If that's their stance for 2023, one is my guess is they wouldn't be willing to have their franchise trade Kirk in the or in the conference. And two, are they willing to accept the transitionary plan to a new young quarterback? Mm -hmm. And that I don't know. Like there's there's so many potential chefs in this kitchen. It gets really, really complicated yeah. because it doesn't feel like Quasi's just got the right to overhaul things. It feels like he's got the right to do his thing, but the Wolves are still like, oh, are we going to, you know, you know, if Kirk wins in San Francisco, what does that say about us? Yeah, no, it's well, I don't care about that. And I think they would find out that it's it's, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to keep going back to you that don't same care. mountaintop. They do. They shouldn't care. They should I'm just care you. about building their own team. Yeah, I'm not advocating for what I just said. I'm just saying it's a problem. And uh, by the way, this is you know maybe your your last few weeks. You never know what's going to happen with these contract negotiations. To do some good for Kirk's charity, the Cousins Crusaders of Purple Daily, our crazy Canadian Cousins Crusaders, if you will. Um, they said, let's bring people together here. It's been a fun season. Eight fourth quarter comebacks, whether you're in or out on Kirk long term. KirkCousins.org. Let's show him some love. Show his family some love. KirkCousins.org if you want to donate 5 bucks, 50 bucks, 500 bucks, uh, And tell them you're one of the crazy Cousins Crusaders of Purple Daily so they know where it's coming from. All right, we got to go. We gave you a bonus episode on the defensive coordinator situation also on Purple Daily today, so check that out, and we will see you. Uh, well, you guys will be on tomorrow. I've got a big moving day tomorrow, so I'm going to let you guys handle all the reckless speculation tomorrow. I'll probably see you guys on Friday on the show. See ya.